Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. Hi, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. Glad you could come back and visit with me today. On today's show, we're heading to Holland, Michigan, the birthplace of a spring tradition, the Northport Nailer Fishing Lure. From kitchen table to a world market, we've got another Michigan business success story coming your way. But first, we're heading to Clarkston, Michigan, where monuments are created, cast in bronze, at the Fine Arts Sculpture Center. Stay tuned, it's all coming up, including today's word of the day, giving you a chance to win another Michigan vacation getaway here on Michigan. Michigan Magazine. I'd like to go out today somewhere new. I'm on my way, you come too. We'll find a place in the sun. In the sun. Today, the Petrucci family of Michigan is recognized throughout America for their distinctive contribution to the demanding specialty and art of mold making through the process of wax shell casting. Here for over 30 years, the Fine Arts Sculptor Center in Clarkston, Michigan has been the means for sculptures to finally cast their works in bronze and other metals. From the larger than life-size casting of Joe Lewis in Cobo Hall, to the young Thomas Edison in Port Huron, and the inspiring Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Mont Pleasant, these works of art were all cast here at the Petrucci Family Foundry in Clarkston. The foundry and experienced staff is also adept at the various sand casting methods, repair and restoration, patina application and even installation. It's been said that the Fine Arts Sculpture Center is truly an extension of the artist himself. Michigan Magazine was drawn to the Fine Arts Sculpture Center from a viewer in Wald Lake who directed us to this inconspicuous foundry that's been working with some of the nation's most renowned artists for generations. We spent the morning with Mike Petrucci who told us of the many years of dedication and devotion his family has put into this unique business of casting. Well, the business has been in operation for uh, 38 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it was, I purchased it from my uncle, my dad's brother, uh, fif almost 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I trained under him for about a year and a half before I bought the business. That's how I kind of learned the business and really enjoyed it. This is a business that uh, many Michigan artists and some artists out of state rely on to see the culmination of their artistry come to, to, to full circle, isn't it? That's right. I mean, you've had some pretty big names that many people are, are can recognize that uh, have come to, to the, the foundry, uh, the, the center here, like, um, for instance, a gentleman we've had on before, Marshall Fredericks, mm -hmm. uh, his family, and some other uh, sculptors that we may recognize uh, in, the, in the area. Well, there's Ed Chesney. Ed mm -hmm. Chesney does quite a bit of monumental work. He's a uh, on the east side of Detroit. He's in his studios in East Point, but he lives in Detroit. Uh, he's done a lot of work. A lot of the pictures you see around here are a lot of his pieces. Mm -hmm. um, Sharon Summers does a lot of wildlife artwork. Uh, Heiner Hertling, uh, we've done castings for Heiner. He's a wildlife artist. Mm -hmm. Pretty well known around. When you say castings, what do you mean? I mean, the artist does the actual artwork. How does it come from him to you, and what, what do you do? Well, no, what the process normally works is the artist will do the clay model of whatever piece they want. Like this Vietnam piece was done in actual, actual size. The monumental pieces, if the figure was standing up, would be eight feet tall. So he brings me, or she brings me, the clay model of the piece, and then we make negative molds around that model. I uh, see. And then when we, we section it off, because they're, they're done in pieces, they're not done poured in one piece, which a lot of people think that they are. 
This piece here was probably done in 25 pieces, mm -hmm. the large scale. Um, so he brings me the clay, we make the molds, and then from the molds then we make waxes and then do our investment casting. So pretty much the artist makes, this is the, the extent as far as the, the, the volume, the, the largeness of it, or do you gradually bring it to the, the full no, scale model? Or? Usually the artist will bring it to full scale. To full scale, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, now some artists uh, will bring us a piece in this scale, let's say a, qu a quarter scale or mm -hmm. one fifth scale, and they might hire us to enlarge it, mm -hmm. but all I would do in turn would be to hire another artist to, to blow it up to that scale. I see. I mean, there's no magic way of getting it from this size to right. eight feet. There's only one way to do it, and that's to, to model it to that I scale. Model it. Go through the steps, if you could, once again, from the clay model to the actual pouring and to the finishing. We, like I say, we make a negative mold. Mm -hmm. We'll put rubber over this entire piece to about a quarter of an inch thick. And then what the rubber does is it picks up all the detail and eliminates a lot of the, the undercutting of the clay. So that when you put a plaster on it, it'll pull off. So the, you put, the rubber is on there first, about a quarter of an inch thick, and then we build a plaster over that. Okay. And I usually section the plaster the way we're going to cast the piece. So for instance, if we were going to cast this head, I would section the, the plaster right around the head. So then when we pull that plaster off and make that wax, we have the wax of the head. Okay. And the same with the back. We might do the back in one section. Well, I'll mold that so the back is molded the way we're going to cast it. So then after the... the the, uh, the rubber mold and plasters are re removed from the model. They're all in reverse. They're negatives. Okay. So then into that negative, then we paint a wax thickness. The thickness of our metal will be in wax. And then we investment cast the wax. And that means we, we attach sprues to it, pouring cups, and we dip it in a ceramic mixture, slurry it's called, and it hardens on that wax. And we have to dip it maybe 10 times to build up that ceramic shell around that wax so that when we fire it, uh, the, the ceramic's gonna hold together and the wax, when you fire it, runs away. Nice. And it creates a negative space within that shell. Okay. And then that negative space then is filled with molten metal. Mm -hmm. So then this is all filled up with metal and then you let it cool and then you break away the shell, and you have your positive in metal. It's quite a lengthy process. I mean, it, it does take a little time. How long do you think it would take from the conception if you got right, right into a project that it would take before? Uh, For a large yeah. piece berry like this, yeah. uh, it might take five months. Mm -hmm. So it's just not an overnight thing. No. I mean, there's a lot of hard work into your end of the situation, too. Right. How did uh, your family get into the, the business of uh, 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 well, my uncle like has been in the family in the foundry business pretty much all his life, mm -hmm. and he did a lot of production foundry work down at Racine Foundry in okay. Detroit. And they, at one point, decided to do some artwork, so they hired a gentleman from Italy to train my uncle in this process. And he did that for about a year down at, at Racine, from what I understand. And uh, then they weren't making any money. So they decided not to do it anymore. Well, he enjoyed it so well that he decided to bring it out here to Clarkston. And he bought this this area we're in now and started doing it himself. So he worked for him, by himself for, oh, probably three or four years, and then he gradually hired people. And But the key is that he, he, he got into it because he loved doing what he was doing. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah, the satisfaction of uh, seeing it come together. I bet that uh, satisfaction you never get tired of yourself as far as no, it's the true. project it, comes it, it, It's sensation. fun to do because it, most things, we're always doing something different. Mm -hmm. and we do some repeat jobs, uh, but for the most part we're doing ones and twos and mm -hmm. it's kind of challenging. Mm -hmm. it's, it's enjoyable. You're also known for uh, actual uh, trophies and things that are presented, presentation awards, things of that sort. You do uh, quite a line of that, too. We do. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of awards, uh, specialty awards. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of golf course invitational awards mm -hmm. uh, for Detroit Golf, Indian Wood, uh, Forest Lake. We do a lot of that kind of stuff, too. This is a model that is being done by a well-known local artist named Sharon Summers. 
And this is typically what she'll do. She'll make a small maquette mm -hmm. that she might show her client. And if they like it and want it larger, then she will then make it larger by uh, obviously blowing it up to this size. And I mean, it's endless as to what size you can go, but this is a really a nice, nice size uh, because it's, it's compact and it's affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, they get too big, they get really expensive. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is for her own church. Oh, this will be a bronze eventually? This eventually will be bronze. I will do the same molding process on this as I've showed you down there. It'll give you done the same way. Right. Now, when you, when you do cast a bronze, is it uh, a shell of the bronze or is it solid bronze or how? One, the it's a shell. The, the, okay. the actual metal thickness is about three sixteenths of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, everybody always says solid bronze. Well, they, it is all bronze, but it's not yeah. one solid mass right. of metal. Right. It's heavy. hot. It's too heavy. Yeah. Too heavy. And it looks like we got a greyhound over here. We have a greyhound in process here. Now oh, the artists actually do come here and do some of the work sometimes, right? Yes, sir. This is a clay model of a, a um, vet from World War II. He was a Congressional Medal of Honor winner. And they're going to put this into an office building in Mount Clemens. And you can see the, the bronze of this is downstairs. Oh, well, it's pretty much completed then. Yes. Yeah. And then the next stage for this piece will be the patina. And that's where we start to see some of the color changes. And that's right, yeah. This is done by a local artist. Her really? Name is uh, Suzanne Young. She does a lot of religious pieces. So we got a lot of talent in this day, don't we? We do, we really do. There's a lot of great artists in this area. We were overwhelmed that day with the artistry and yet to be completed projects around us created by some of the most talented hands in the world and brought to monumental status by the Fine Arts Sculpture Center of Clarkston. We thank Mike Petrucci for sharing the operation with us, who in turn presented us with an Edward Chesney bronze casting. I'd like you to take it back to for your museum. We will, we certainly will. Now we'll have a little piece of the Clarkston area, the uh, heritage that uh, you've been providing the area for many years. A sample of that in our Michigan Magazine Museum put on a place of honor. Thank you very much, Mike, and thanks for appearing in Michigan Magazine. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Bio for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Bio. Rose Valley Winery committed to making quality wines from locally grown cold hardy grapes. Rose Valley Winery on Beechwood Road, Rose City. Shopping for that special person just got easier when you shop at Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of the Rose City city limits. You'll find gifts for everyone on your list from 1 to 100. Shop online or in person at Rose City Drug, Rose City. Discount Foods, Downtown Bio. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods, Downtown Bio. On this edition of Michigan Magazine, we head toward Holland, the location of the headquarters for Invader Incorporated and Magna Dye Products, makers of popular Northport Nailer fishing lures. What began first as merely a hobby and pastime quickly developed into filling a niche market where the demand is met by manufacturing tens of thousands of lures for worldwide distribution. We met with co-owner Joan Grunhout at the base operations where she told us of how this family-owned business has grown steadily by developing and marketing the Northport Nailer. 25 years ago or so, um, somebody came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. Tell us. That was Dennis Endy, and he and my father were working together at the time selling lift jacks. My uncle was a tool and die maker, and so the three of them put their heads together and we built a die to stamp out the spoons. Then we set up a paint booth to paint the spoons. And then it was cottage industry. We had neighbor ladies put the lures together. And then we peddle it at shows. And this was all a hobby, so this was all after hours. So you take any outdoor ramas and things like this, or these different right. sports shows. Or like your Grand the Rapids boat show, your yes. Chicago show. Detroit and you hit all your little shows in between all the different uh -huh. steelheader shows. So you get a booth and you'd set up and, uh, and you put the lures, put out. The lures out there and uh, so the attraction was there and the guy said yeah we'll try this or the lady. Mm -hmm. And they found out that they caught fish. It was successful. It was very successful. All right. And then the salmon industry grew to be quite quite a large industry and as that grew the hobby kind of went out of control <laughs> so that Eventually, 
everyone retired early from their careers and we went full time into the fishing tackle industry. No longer doing it on the on the on the uh, dining room floor. And, and it literally was done on the dining room floor, <laughs> on the kitchen table. It kind of took over yeah. everybody's houses. We market across the United States, across Canada. We have markets in Denmark and Sweden and Finland. Super. And we're now just working to break into the South American market. We're right out of Holland, so Michigan. It started with our magnum size nailer. Right here. Right there. How did, did you ever come up with a design like this? Could you explain this, to that? This follows the shape of a bait fish and by giving it the cup that it has and the certain shape that it has as this is dragged through the water it, the spoon itself flutters uh -huh. and so that's what we were looking for is to Something imitate the action. action of an injured bait fish is what your game fish will strike All right mm -hmm. whether you use a downrigger a diving sinker a planer board anything you're trolling for these lures will catch whatever fish you're after so you can be fishing down south for striped bass you can be fishing whether you're in Florida, in California. It doesn't matter the species of fish. If you troll for that fish, these lures are designed to catch those fish. Now your walleye and your pike will go for a smaller spoon right. than what a salmon would go for. Yeah. So you just scale down the mm -hmm. size. And your walleye like your greens and oranges and yellow, mm -hmm. so you tend to go to those color spectrum for those Who fish. decides the colors? I mean, the, the, I see you got chartreuses and bright greens and We talk to reds. a lot of fishermen, <laughs> a lot of fishermen, and find out what, what the fish are going after. Yeah. And it does work. And it does work. Your color makes a big difference. Yeah. We are up to about 10 to 12 different types of lures. And then of those 10 to 12 different types, there's about four to five different sizes. Four to five different sizes and yeah. colors? I would say we're into the thousands. Oh boy. It's oh hard boy. to keep track of some days. Yeah. yeah. And we're always looking for new colors. Yeah. So you add to that every day. Oh my gosh, I am right in my glory. <laughs> Because fishing is really my favorite pastime. This is kind of like being a kid in a candy store. It really truly is. What do we have here? Hi, Becky. Hi, Becky. Hi. I see you got your hands full, so I won't be able to shake your hand, but <laughs> what are you doing there? I am hooking right now the lures. Uh-huh, you're hooking the lures. Mm -hmm. So you can hook the fish. Right. Okay. And uh, is there a particular bait that you are working on? Is there a particular name for it? Or is it? Just a She's spoon? working on the hammered silver right now. Silvers. Okay. This is an order that we carry no inventory, so we build per order. I see. So she's building a specific order that will go to one of our customers. This is Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hi. And this is Linda. Hi, Linda. And they are working on what we call our gator releases. These are what we're dangling from the end of the downriggers uh -huh. out there. This is what you attach to your downrigger to hook your lure into. Okay. And this is an order that is headed out to Denmark when we're finished with it. Who do we have over here in the corner? We have Michelle back here in the corner. Hi Michelle. Hi. How are you? Good. <laughs> Looks to me like you're really a busy lady today too. Yep, packaging. You're packaging. Yep. And what are you packaging there? Right now this is the kaleidoscope the Christmas holly. Okay. <laughs> and every business there has to be a nerve center and this is part of it, right Joan? Yes, this is who makes us look good and keeps the business going. This is Beth. Hi Beth. Hi. Glad to meet you. And this is Barb. Hi, Barb. Hi. Glad to meet you. Well, Del, what we'd like to do is give you a couple lures uh -huh. to add to your museum, and hopefully hey. you take them out fishing, too. <laughs> <laughs> but take them out fishing, they probably won't end up in the museum, I can no, tell you. <laughs> no, These are two of the most basic colors that we have. These okay. are two of the first colors we ever came out with. Great. And they're still right at the top of the popularity list. All right. And then of our oh. new Kaleidoscope well, series, those super. are our two, two hottest colors going well. right now. Eat your heart out. I'll tell you what, folks, uh, we are going to try them. Good. And thanks, Joan, so much for being part of Michigan Magazine. And uh, we will put these in the museum, okay. other than the ones that I use for fishing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying on a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. 
vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com well, there you go. It's simply amazing what you'll find up the beaten path. We hope you'll join us next week for more Michigan adventures. Meanwhile, to help you make your own adventures, the word of the day is Log Haven. Take that word, email it along with your name, address, and phone number to iWatchMichiganMagazine at gmail.com, and you'll be in the drawing for one of our five vacation giveaways. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter to discover all that we're doing and where we're going. Get out and get out and discover the Great Lakes State. We'll meet you back here on RFD TV to compare notes. Have a great week. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Jerry's joined at West Branch and with the best burgers in town. Jerry's has a full menu, but when you order the burgers steaming hot, they're made the way you like it. Stack time, made to order, add fries, and you've got a complete meal. Jerry's joined at West Branch, home of the best burgers in town. The Art of Amalia Jonas is at the Art Store in New Lupton, Michigan. Stop by her gallery or visit her online to purchase that perfect masterpiece or sign up for private lessons. Begin your journey in the world of art by capturing the inspiration around you under the personal direction of Amalia Jonas at the Art Store. Hale Hardware, your do it center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale.